1 John chapter number 2 and verse number 15. I want to preach to you on this thought. Why do people backslide? Why do people backslide? Now, I've dealt with this in my life, and you've dealt with it in yours, and you're going to deal with it again, and I'm going to deal with it again. But what causes people to backslide on God? Now, what is the definition of backsliding? If you're not as close to the Lord as you ever have been, then you've went backwards in your spiritual relationship with Christ. And that's as simple as I know how to do it. If I'm walking down the road and I'm, I'm going to a store and I get about halfway to the store, I'm on my way to that store, but if I turn around and go back for something, I've went backwards, have I not? It's the same way with spiritual life. Uh, you're either going forward with the Lord or you're backing up. And I don't want to back up. It's too late. In the, it's too late in the day, so to speak, for God's people to backslide and back up on God. We find these verses of Scripture, and then I want to give you an illustration or two concerning this. The Bible says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof, but he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. Father, thank you for the word of God. Bless it, I pray. Help us to rightly divide it. Speak to our hearts in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. There is several instances in Scripture where prominent men backslid on God. And we know in our, in our history of, of preachers in America that are many preachers that are most prominent have backslid on God. Now, we, I use that because that's what most people hear about. But we don't hear a lot about the common folks sitting on the church pew that backslide on God. Now, I'm not here to bash you or any such thing today. I'm just telling you, I know how the devil works. I know how he's been working on me here as of late to try to get me to let down a little bit, try to get me just to, just to take it easy for a little while. We're living in the last days of time, and if we ever, as believers, need to be close to God, it's today. Amen? It's today that we need to walk with the Lord and serve the Lord. And when you get up tomorrow, it's tomorrow that you need to determine that you're going to walk with God, that you're going to do what God wants you to do, that you're going to get closer to the Lord because we're getting closer to the big house. Amen? We're getting closer to home, and we need to be sure that we're walking close to the Lord. I backslid one time terribly bad, and I'm not proud of it, but I always have to tell it. And, and, and because I was most miserable, now if I get just a step or two away, I become most miserable because I know that backsliding begins with just a step or two going back. Amen? And the Bible tells us that we're to love not the world. That's the biggest reason for backsliding in the heart of believer is the love of the world. There was, uh, we, we look at some people in Scripture that backslid. David, the great psalmist David, a man after God's own heart backslid on God. We see it, we see it in, in the Psalms how he backslid on God. Saul backslid on God. Peter denied Christ after walking close to him. After being next to him, he denied Christ. He backslid on God. Then there's a, a man later on in Scripture. His name was Demas. And Demas was uh, probably saved under the ministry of Paul. He was one that worked with Paul. He was one that, that uh, no doubt set out to serve the Lord. But we find that this man Demas over in the book of, of 1 Timothy, Paul said about Demas four years after he had, he had been with him at the church of Colossae, he, he says to Timothy, Demas hath forsaken me, why? Having loved this present world. Now friend, I'll tell you something today. The love of the world is what causes most people to backslide on God. Now, I love living, amen? I enjoy life. I enjoy breathing. I enjoy going and doing things with my family. But you know what makes me happier than anything that I know in this world? Being right here on Sunday morning, amen? Now, I look forward to doing things, but I love being here at the house of God with God's people, preaching the Word of God, sharing with you the Word of God. And friend, I'll tell you something today. The things of this world grow mighty dim when I get around God's people and when I get close to the Lord. Amen? Oh, I'll tell you, folks get out and they see things of the world that look so bright. Young people, listen to me today. 
Some of you going off to college. There will be more going off to school later on. Listen to me. The easiest place to backslide is when you get out of the house. Amen. The most common backsliding comes when, when young folks or when anyone else gets away from their surroundings that they've been raised in all their life. They get out of those surroundings and they go where, you know, where they're not as, as maybe sheltered as they was or, or maybe they're not around the same kind of people that they're around all the time. And it's easy for the devil to say, look what you've been missing out on. I want to tell you, it ain't worth it. Amen. The world is not worth it for you to get out and get the dangling around in the world. I promise you, there was a man in, in, uh, in the book of Luke called uh, the prodigal son. He thought he got away from his mom and dad and he went down to the far country and he wasted his substance on righteous living. He lived it up for a short time, but that didn't last. I'll tell you something, backsliding does not last. You'll do one or two things if you're backslidden on God or if you're contemplating backsliding on God. You'll do one or two things. You'll get down there and you'll stay down there and you'll be miserable and the Lord will take you out of here. Or you'll get down there and you'll see how miserable you are and you'll come back to the Father. Amen. You'll come back with, with, and you'll always regret it all the days of your life if you backslide on God. Oh, friend, I don't want to backslide. I've been there and done that. And every time the devil comes along and says, why don't you just step back just a little bit? Why don't you go ahead and do this? There ain't nobody going to know. Why don't you love this pleasure of the world? There ain't nobody going to see you. There's nobody ever going to know. I want to tell you something. When I start that is when I backslide. An old farmer was there. said he was out in the Midwest somewhere with a lot of, wanting a lot of grazing land. Now look around here, there's a lot of crazy land, but there's, you know, there's plenty of grazing land around here. And I look around and, you know, people, you know, people uh, make hay, you know, and I've seen them bailing hay this, this last week and all the uh, things they've got for the cattle. But this fellow out west, he didn't have a lot of grazing land, and, he, and his cattle were getting out constantly out of the fence. And the fellow said, how in the world do these cattle, what makes them get out of the fence? He said, well, they're in here with everything they need. They, I feed them when they can't get enough grass to graze on. He said, I feed them. He said, they've got plenty of water. But he said, that old cow will get its head down. First of all, friend, if you ever backslide on God, you're going to get your head down. You're going to forget looking up to the Lord, and you're going to get to looking at the ground. As long as you keep your head up looking toward Jesus, you won't backslide on God. Amen? <clears throat> as long as you're looking to Jesus, you can't backslide on God. But he said them cows will get their head down and they'll see a little tuft of grass and they'll go over there and they'll eat that up and they won't look up and look around to see where they're at. They'll see another little tuft of grass and they'll go over there and they'll eat that one and they'll follow that along. They'll run into the fence and that grass will go along the fence and they'll follow it along and then once in a while they'll look through the fence and see all that green grass growing on the other side. Maybe more tufts of grass over there and they'll follow that fence along till they find a hole in the fence. And when they find a hole in the fence and nobody's looking, guess what? They go through the fence and they get out of the pasture and they get lost and it takes somebody to go round them up and get them back in. Now, friend, I'll tell you, it's a way with a Christian. If you get your head down and go to look at the pleasures of the world, you might say, boy, that looks real good. I think I'll try that. Some of your good buddies, hey, hey youngins or adults, some of your good buddies that come along and say, here, won't you, won't you, try, won't you try this joint? And now I'm not going to do that. But you know what? They'll keep coming back. Just, just go ahead and try this joint. And if you ain't real careful, you know what will happen? No, <coughs> oh, that sure was good. And then you'll get a little buzz and think, well, that wasn't too bad. And then you'll go off. You might not do that again for another two or three years. And then somebody else comes, come on, try this. And before you know it, you're going to have a, a, good, a good little buzz going, and that's not going to last you long, and you're going to regret you ever did it. And you know what? You found yourself backsliding on God. Now you say, that just happens to lost people. No, far, far, you know, it happens more and more to save people every day because God want, or the devil wants you to backslide on him. Now I use that, I use that marijuana for just an illustration. It could be anything. 
It could be, it could be something that you see that you're not supposed to look at. It could be something that you listen to that you're not supposed to be listening to, but you think, well, I'll do it, and it ain't going to harm nobody. It's not going to hurt anything. But if, it never, if nobody ever found out what you were doing, it's going to harm you spiritually. Somebody bow your head just a minute. Let me make sure I'm heading the right direction here. How many of you here want to be just as close to the Lord as you can get? Raise your hand. Okay, I'm headed right direction. You can look back there. Now look, friend, if you want to be just as close to the Lord as you can be to God, you know what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to stay close to the Lord. And what will cause you to backslide is when you get the daily dallying around in the things of the world. It's what happened to me. I got the daily dallying around in the things of the world, and I wound up in a mess. But guess what? I come to myself, amen, and I decided, Lord, help me. God, I want to get back where I'm right with you. And I got back right with the Lord. And every day since that, I've wanted to, leave, I've wanted to be close to God. I've not been. But friend, I never want to get back to that place where I once was. And if you're a child of God and you, you can remember back when you were real close to the Lord and God was blessing you and everything was going just right and you was praying good and you was reading the Bible good and everything was going just right and you're not there now, friend, you need to get that right with the Lord and you need to come back to God and say, Lord, I want back where I was with you. See, now God ain't run off nowhere. When I backslide on God, guess whose fault it is? It's my fault. What causes men to backslide? What causes people to go back on God? Well, number one, the love of the world causes backsliding. The, the backsliding begins in the heart. What comes to your mind? What comes to your heart? The backsliding begins in the heart. And when you, when you backslide on God, it started from way down in here somewhere. The heart is exceedingly wicked. Listen, we need to trust God. We need to ask Him, Lord, help me not to follow. Lord, help me not to follow what, what the devil tries to get me to follow. But God, help me to follow you. Help me to be faithful to you. And help me to turn to you. What causes backsliding? Number one, a love of the world causes backs, backsliding. Worldliness is everything around the believer that, that you look at. And it's not of God, but it's of the devil. Everything you and I do should include Christ in it. So I'm preaching that's old, old, old fashioned. That's old fashioned belief. It is the truth, my friend. Everything you do should have Jesus in it. Amen. You say, Well, I don't want Jesus to go some of the places I'm going. Then you ought not to be going to those places. Amen. I don't want Jesus to listen to some of the things I listen to. Then you don't need to be listening to that. Amen. Backsliding begins in the heart, and backsliding is doing those things which we know are not right with God. And if we'll all be honest with ourselves, we all do things that we, that we don't want the Lord with us when we do it. Amen? Now see, the thing about it is, I'm up here in front of you all admitting it all, and it's either, either you all admit it to yourself, and you don't have to stand up here and tell me, but I'm telling you, I know how the heart is. I know how the devil works. And any time he can get you and I to step back a little bit. Hey, young folks, you ought to want to follow God as close as you've ever followed anyone. Amen. Make him the center of your day. Make him the center of your life. Make him the focus of everything you do. And I promise you, your life will be happier than 99% of the teenagers and young folks in this world if you make Jesus, if you'll make him first. And I believe with all my heart that worldliness is what causes a lot of folks, they lose their focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you lose your focus on Him, you've lost your focus on living for the Lord. Because what is a Christian? It's one that's like unto Christ. And when you backslide on God, you, you begin to, you begin to uh, realize, you know, you begin to understand in your, in your own heart, Lord, I know I ought to be doing this, but it's all right. It's not hurting me yet. You just don't understand. It's hurting you from the day that you go back on God. From the moment that you turn from God, it's hurting you. You may not get out into deep sin. Most people don't. 
Most people just quit doing things that they normally would do. You know, the devil don't mind that. The devil don't have to get your way out into deep sin to say you're backslidden. Hey, listen, if I don't pray like I ought to, I'll step back from God. Amen. If I don't read my Bible like I should, I, I backslid on God. I'll step back away from God. See, most of us want to determine that backsliders are, are those that have, quitly, that have completely quit church. They've got out of fellowship with God's people and are laying, laying at the house on Sunday uh, asleep or drunk or, or, or doing something they ought not to be doing. I'll tell you something. Backsliding is when you're away from God from where you used to be with God. And my friend, I have to ask the Lord, Lord, help me to be as close to you today as I was yesterday. Help me to be closer than I was yesterday. We lose our focus on Christ, and then we begin to backslide. What else causes people to backslide? Not only the worldly things of this world, but you know, sometimes persecution will cause people to backslide. That was one thing that happened to Peter. Peter began to be persecuted when he was asked about if he knew Christ. And he denied Christ because he couldn't take the persecution. Persecution would call. Listen, if people, if people begin to make fun of you, be careful that you don't backslide and deny Jesus. Ask God, Lord, help me if I'm persecuted. God, help me to stand for you. Help me to stand for what's true. Help me to stand for what's right. And God, don't let me backslide under persecution that may come my way. Hey, the devil... The, the devil wants you to shut up. The devil don't want you to say nothing in his name, and he'll try to embarrass you, and he'll try to he'll he'll encourage others to make fun of you if you witness for him or if you speak of him, if you speak highly of the Lord. Persecution's gonna come your way. But don't get discouraged and don't backslide because of persecution. Life is not always easy. Life is sometimes difficult, but when persecution and struggles of life come your way, it'd be easy to say, Lord, you're not helping me. Listen, God's helping you, and God knows you. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, and no matter what you're going through, Jesus is still there. You stay close to him. He'll show up. Amen. He'll show up. Sometimes we hit a, a pothole in our Christian life, and that's when it's easy to backslide. You hit a bump in the road. You know, you'll be going along, things will be going just smooth, and, and then all of a sudden something will happen in your life to disturb your whole life, to upset your whole life. And I don't know what it might be. It might be a, 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 a health concern. It may be a financial issue. I don't know what happened, but, it, but it'll be going along, and it's something, something upsets your life, and it's easy to say, Lord, you don't care a thing about me. But Jesus said, what? He said, I'll be with you. He said, fear not, I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. And God will never leave you or never forsake you. And when you hit a pothole in the road of life, amen, just remember, the devil means it that you backslide, but God means it to strengthen you and to encourage you and to help you because there's going to be more potholes in life. Amen. I've run through many. And I'm sure many more come my way. But with the help of God, I don't want to backslide. I'm just being honest with you. I'm telling you what I want. I don't want to backslide on God. What else causes backsliding? What else causes men, men and women to backslide on God? Not only persecutions. You know, when people backslide on God, you know what adds to that spiritual stage of that backslidden person? criticism of other believers kick them when they're down oh friend when you see someone that's backslid on God the worst thing we can ever do is to talk about him the best thing we can ever do is to pray for him amen if this preacher backslides amen don't tell everybody how bad I am but take, take him me to the Lord and say Lord help him God he's backslid God help him but it's easy nature. It's the nature of man to criticize when people are down instead of helping them. God help us to be a blessing and not, not crit, be critical of people when they're back. I know folks that's gone back on God, but Lord help me that I'd lift them up in prayer and not be critical of them. What else might cause backsliding? And I'm 
I'm moving right along pretty quickly. False teachers will cause backsliding. See, there's this bunch going around today in the name of in the in the name of being fundamentally Bible preachers, in the name of being Baptist believers, in the name of believing the Word of God. But they're they're soft soaping the gospel. They're soft soaping the Word of God. And telling you, telling people that, well, a little sin is not really sin. You can do, you can do this and you can do that. You can get out into the world and live like the world and still be a Christian. Now you get out in the world, live like the world, and you're still saved, but you're not a Christian. Amen. But there's this crowd going around, this religious crowd, that'll tell you, well, just, you know, we're and preachers, I, I've, I've heard, well, you know, if, if you lighten up a little bit, you'll get a better crowd. A better crowd of what? That's what my, always my question is. If I, if I lighten, up, lighten up and don't preach what the Word of God says, and I get a bit bigger crowd, what kind of crowd am I going to have? And then if I do that, I'll be backslid on God, and then I get right with God and go to preaching the Word of God like I ought to. Guess where that crowd's going to go? Right back down where they at to start with. They didn't want to hear it to believe to begin with. The Bible tells me to preach the Word. Be instant, in season, out of season. Amen. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering. And by the help of God, that's what I want to do. And listen, by the help of the Lord, that's what you ought to want. Amen. Is, is the sound preaching of the Word of God. And not this easy, easy believism stuff. And well, you just, oh, I get so sick of one particular person on the, on the TV that, you know, if I hadn't spent money on it, I'd probably just throw it out the window. Amen. Just, just in spite. All is joy. You be kind to others and they'll be kind to you. You sow good seeds of kindness and seeds of kindness will be sown your way. Thousands and thousands and thousands attend that mess. Now you let some old boy from a country like me get up there in that crowd and preach. You know what happened? they tar and feather me and carry me off in pieces in the offering plate, I guarantee you. But that's what tickles your ears. That's what tickles people's ears. They want to hear, so they don't want to hear how, hey, when I, was, when I was out of the will of God, I didn't want anybody telling me I was out of the will of God. I knew it. But I listened to it anyway because I knew it was the truth. I never have understood that thing tickling the ears. Do you like it? <laughs> I guess that means just soft words that, that just tickle your ears and, and doesn't, doesn't really hurt your feelings. <laughs> what good's that going to do you? Uh, what good's that going to do you? You can go up to an old pig and get down and tickle that pig's ears and say, Oh, you're such a pretty old pig. But does that change the looks of that pig? Now, some people really adore them pigs. They let them in their house run around. If you've got one running in your house, amen, that's close bacon is what I can say. You'll never be hungry as long as you got that for a pet. Amen, that's all right with me. My wife won't let me have one. I, th I thought maybe get one just for emergency situations. You know, like a grocery store, cut, you know. <laughs> but a pig's still a pig. No matter what you put on it, it's still a pig. And it still looks like a pig. Sin, sin, no matter what you put on it, no matter how much you dress it up, no matter how much you try to soft soap it and say, well, it's all right. Listen, sin is still sin. The devil's still the devil. And backsliders are still backslidden unless they get right with the Lord. That's the, that's the greatness of it all is there is a way back from backsliding. Amen. There is a way back. First of all, you've got to return to the house of God. Amen. Now, I know I got on this last week and... And uh, I can't help it. It's what God gave me again. So what happens when people backslide? I've said this all since I've been preaching. People backslide and it starts out in little bitty pieces and little bitty steps. I'll hurry. I know you're looking at me, somebody cringing up. I'll hurry. But listen, it starts out in little bitty steps. You'll say, well, I think I just won't go to church today. So you said it. Listen. Listen. <laughs> I used to lay out of church and thought, boy, I'm going to have fun today. Miserable as I could be. 
But you know what? After a while, that got, I got over that. That's the scary part is when you get over it. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you know. Now, one thing I've never done is went fishing on Sunday, not for saying there's you know, anything particularly wrong with that, as long as you ain't at church, but I've never done it. But just suppose that I said, I said, Brother Max, don't you tell Frank, you know, these other deacons, and I had a fishing thing. I said, don't you tell nobody. I had somebody say it. It's been said to me. Frank, Max, is good. I about called you Frank then, didn't I? But I caught myself. Max would look at me and say, Preacher, I ain't promise you nothing. You need to be in that pulpit thing. Or suppose I just call out sick. Uh, Brother Frank, <coughs> I ain't going to make it to church this morning. And I'm standing there with my fly rod in my hand, my bait box in my, ta- in my creel, and I'm ready to catch. I'm, I'm already beside the trout stream. <coughs> I wouldn't enjoy that a bit. Wouldn't catch no fish. And then I'd have to come and confess up. I'm telling you, friend, it's better just not to backslide to start with. Don't listen to the lies of the devil. Don't let him tell you that it'll be all right. It won't be all right. You be faithful to the house of God. God will bless you, I promise you. Amen. You be faithful to God. God will bless you, I promise you. He'll bless you. Amen. Forsaking not the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is. What the Bible says in the book of Hebrews. Forsake not the assembly of ourselves together. Then last of all, or close to last of all, some people are not backslidden. Now you listen to me closely because I don't want nobody getting the wrong idea. Some people are not backslidden. They've just never been saved by God's grace. Now, If you believe what the Bible said and you've done what the Bible said and you've confessed your sins to God and you've called on Him for salvation, by the Word of God, whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. But there's some people I don't believe are backslid. I believe they're simply just lost. You know why? Because they will name the name of Christ as being saved. And they they will say that they're born again, yet they do nothing They do nothing that is Christ-like. The Bible says by the fruits. I'm not judging. I'm just telling you what I see in the Word of God. The Bible says that by the fruits you you, you judge them. By what fruit they bear. Now I'm telling you, you go back to the old pig again. That old pig, you, you take him out of that pig pen. You used to have a pig pen. I'd go over and slop them pigs. It always amazed me. That old pig so fat and happy that it didn't care. All it was looking for was living was for that next slop bucket to be poured down that chute. And it didn't matter what was in it except cucumbers. It'd scarf it all down. Root out them cucumbers. And nasty, filthy, stinking, and we're going to eat that come fall. So what would you do come fall? Shot it between the eyes, pulled it out. Great, you know, before it, before it quit kicking good, you pull it out because it bled it real good. I know that's gross to some people, but that's just what we do. Or you could take that pig out, take a water hose to it, spray it down real good, get all the mud, get your little get your little toenail clippers out and clip its little toenails out, and you could paint them with with pretty pink uh, pretty pink toenail paint. You could take a little, you could take a little bow and you could put it around its little neck and tie it up there, and you could pierce its little ears and put little dangly earrings in it. And you know what? You'd say, "Well, that pig's still a pig. It sure is." And guess what's going to happen? You might dress it up any way you want. You might even put a little skirt on it. Not a mini skirt, though, or not short shorts. Amen. You might put a little, a little modest skirt on that pig. This is awful, isn't it? And you might do that. And you know what you do? You, you turn that pig out and. You know where that pig's going to go? To the first mud hole he can find. You cleaned him up. He looked good to start with. But the next thing you know, he's right back in that old mud hole, wallowing around in the mud of the world. That's what it is with some people, I'm afraid. They ain't backslid. 
They got in, they thought they got saved, or may, they may have professed to get saved, but they never believed with a heart. See, you can't change, you can change a pig from the outside, but you can't change their heart, they're still a pig. And a lost man, you cannot change a lost man or woman. You can't change their heart. You might dress them up. That's what, that's what scares me today is people sometimes believe because they did, you know, they, maybe they went down the side and got on a, 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 the membership of a church. Or, or, or maybe they got in the crowd and got baptized. And they're under the false security or, you know, that, that, they're, born, that they're saved. Because they done something. Listen, what I done happened from my heart. You can't change a lost man's heart. It takes God to change a lost man's heart. And friend, today, if you're saved by God's grace, you ought to rejoice in that and say, Lord, I don't want to backslide on you, but I want to get closer than I've ever been before. And I bowed last night and I got this morning. I said, oh God, help me to be close to you. God, help me to be your servant, and God, help me to preach the word. Amen. And God, help me to stay close to you. You know why? Jesus is coming soon. So I worry about people that claim to be saved, but you never find them at the house of God. I mean, they don't, they're not just absent once in a while. They just don't ever go. I worry about that. Now, is it impossible for someone to backslide to that condition? No, it's not. Prodigal son, he went down to the park, but eventually he came back. But what bothers me is when it, people live in sin, it don't bother them. See, that prodigal son, he went down there and he, he could remember. He came to himself and he remembered what was happening back at the father's house. And what will happen to you, my dear friend, Young or old, if you backslide on God, here's what's going to happen to you. You're going to come to yourself one of these days and you're going to say, look what I've done. And you're going to run back to the Father's house. See, that's what will happen to people if they've truly been born again. You've got to get a hold of them sometime. You've got to get a hold of them some way. You've got to bring them back to yourself. Father, we thank you for the Word of God this morning. Lord, I pray right now, God, that you'd help us, Lord, that we not backslide on you, but we get closer every day. God, help us to hear what we need to hear, listen to what we need to listen to, see what we need to see, and God, help us to stay close in these last days. We'll thank you in Jesus' name. Amen.